da, da, da. Oh. Hey, Instagram, it's me, T, from the Pattersons, taking the trench to bed. Ooh, just a little bit difficult this morning. Look, a note. When I do these um, tirades, well, when I speak to you, uh, usually on a daily basis, uh, so I, I have been trying to go back to like, to like three times a week, but then stuff keeps on happening, and I, you, I gotta get back to, I get my wife to. Anyway, the point is, I just talk. You know what I mean? There's no notes. Look, I, I've been talking uh, on radio, let's go, on transmissions. Let's put it that way. I've been talking on transmissions since 1972, right? And uh, and, and going through uh, community radio and doing all kinds of programs. I just. As it happens, it happens, right? So, I don't, I mean, I almost had this thing. I said, look, this, this is too much happening right now. I need to start writing stuff down, right? And, you know, that would be a way to do it. But then I, would, I wouldn't be doing the spirit of these spewings to you. <laughs> I got to put a negative in there. These spewings to you, you know? Uh, because a lot of this stuff just happens because... It, I have to grab it where it happens. It's like uh, the way I put it this way. Uh, 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 Quincy True, famous, uh, uh, an American author, a uh, uh, you know poet, famous poet, blah 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 blah. He he wrote that uh, that uh, what do you call that uh, that biography of, of Miles Davis, blah 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 blah. You know, and uh, one time I was in in his presence, whatever, and and there were some people around, and they asked, well, well, Quincy, how do you do it? You know, <laughs> talk about because he's a poet, you know. It says, well, yeah, I'll tell you what I do. Every morning I get up, I sit in front of my typewriter. Back then they had typewriters. And uh, I sit there. He said, when he said every morning, he meant early, like 6, 5, 6 o'clock in the morning. And I sit there. And I wait. <laughs> and, it says, and it says, and if there's a, uh, basically talking about poetry, and there's a, if, there, if, if there's a poem out there that goes past me, I grab that. Can I say it? Too? I grab that motherfucker. That's what he said. Quote, I quote, I quote, I grabbed that motherfucker. And it's like, uh, to me, everything is everything. That's quoting uh, Donnie Hathaway, greatest philosopher that I've known. Uh, which means that you are connected, right? And if you are really connected, uh, then the things that you need to know, you'll know at the time that you need to know them. Okay? Having said all that, <laughs> I meander. I try to get people out of this. I, I got to try to get people not to listen to me because later on something might happen. You know, the people that need to listen to me to hear me and blah, blah, blah. Okay. So, several things have been happening, right? Because, you know, I monitor the internet. I shouldn't say, well, I monitor the internet because I'm in Africa. You know, I ain't got nothing else to do. You know, I don't have to worry about the, 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 the news and stuff like that. Um, and it, it, it's interesting, like, I, the most information that, that comes to me is like after I, I talked to my, like, I talked to my sister yesterday. She's in the States. And, uh, and every time I talk to her, I get these little tiny things, right? And then then it goes away. And then to, to, to people, it might be inconsequential. But to me, it's very consequential because every time I finish talking to her, in, in, in the next 24 hours, stuff comes to me. It just comes to me. I can't explain this to you, but it comes to me, right? And uh, you know, she's a regular, let's say regular, she's actually extraordinary, but she's, a, she's, from, she's from the projects, you know what I mean? Patterson projects, you know, and she, she, she like me, like, like people's, when I, I travel a lot, and people say, well, you have an American accent, blah, 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 blah. I said, look, wherever I go, I never, I never lose my accent, you know, I never lose my whatever. Right? My sister's the same way. It, it, and when I write, I write differently. When I talk to that, you uh, talk differently. But she keeps her, uh, her, let's call it her project bona fides. <laughs> She's a real black woman. She'll talk black, right? But, but she's a professional. So when she has to write, you can say, whoa, this, this, this is the same person, right? But the point is, uh, what, what, what happens with, with, with me, I don't lose anything. And, and the things that I need, when I need it, if I, if I wait, not wait long, if I just run around, things will come to me. For instance, now this is going to weigh out. Uh, there's this thing, I, I grew up Catholic, you know, catechism and all that stuff, right? But don't, don't worry about that part either. Um, but 
In fact, no, do worry about that part. This is interesting because you had to go to the grotto every once in a while and whatever in York, wherever it was, right? So I've been to the Vatican, you know, I've been prayed in the Sistine Chapel. Uh, was that to consecrate, to consecrate, whatever you call that when, 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 a, when, a, when a church becomes a basilica? That, that in, in, um, in, um, in, in Norfolk, Virginia is the only African, uh, or what I should say, uh, American, African, African American, whatever, uh, black basilica in the United States is in, which just contrary a couple of years ago, because I was there, you know, <laughs> with the Monsignor and all that. I was there um, in, in Norfolk, Virginia. So what's the likelihood of, of me, you know, I, I, don't know, I have all these, you know, as in Brazil, the, the, the third highest uh, um, uh, condom blade person there, welcomed me in, said I dreamt that you was coming, all kinds of religion, you know, bathing the Ganges River, I mean, all kinds of stuff. I purposely did not, I was in Ramon Jordan, but I did not go to the, the Red Sea and all that stuff. Yeah. But all kinds of experiences I've had, you know, hanging out with the, in the temple, with the, in, in the tabernacles, in the, at the holy city of Tubal, all kinds of weird, not weird things, things that happen, right? So, I'm only attuned to what happens. Anyway, back to the Catholic thing. There's a thing that says, well, God sees you every place. You know, God always sees you. And it struck me as odd that that's, we I mean God always sees me. Well, well, well okay, you tell a kid that and they might believe it, right? But then, I was uh, hanging out. I had a relationship. Anyway, I had a relationship with this uh, the, the, this woman, and she she had a she had a daughter, and but she how she was raising her daughter, uh, it was homeschooling the daughter, but also uh, which is kind of interesting, uh, because well she would like hire a person like a, a graduate a student, uh, and, and an art student, and then and say to take the daughter to to a museum. So. The, 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 the guy would be telling her all about music. So she came, the daughter came home one, excited one day and said, you know what I found out? That there's a spider within six six feet of you, wherever you are on the planet. I was like, oh, that's interesting. That not mean anything to you, but it struck me because it just stayed with me. And then I'm going like, as a lab technician, I got very into like uh, what I call dust mites. You know? So if God is, is everything is everything, if God is every place, that means that a, a God, God is in the dust mite, you're seen. You know, God is in the spider, you're seen. So you can't, there are no secrets in the world. It's, it's not secrets, it's how things come to you. Let's put it that way. Okay, now that I got rid of everybody, <laughs> only the people are really into what I'm saying, let me get to what I'm trying to say. So I'm, I'm also, I'm, I'm sorry, I should also tell you that I'm a, I'm a, I'm a real media um, person. You know what I mean? I'm, most of my adult life is spent in the media. You know, and specifically in radio, specifically in community radio, which is a different animal than you do your legacy medias. And uh, even right now, well, now you're getting a little bit more. Now you almost understand community radio because there's so many podcasts and so many uh, ways of people are, are, are communicating with each other. So you understand that. But back then, in in in, in the, oh, I guess I was up in, in, in the seventies and the eighties, nineties, uh, even two thousands. The only people that really, before the podcast, the only people that are really doing the stuff that, that I'm talking about, well, people, was community radio. So when you when you listen to a podcast, you really listen to community radio, okay? The reason why legacy, and okay, that's, that's the whole thing. Let me leave that part. So so I, I look at things and things come to me. So for instance, uh, I saw the Joe Rogan, uh, and when I do this thing, I sit, I, I, I'm locked in. It's like watching a movie, I'm locked in. No, I'm used to that. Like I, you know, I, I saw the the, the what six and a half thousand version, heavy version of War and Peace put out by 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 Soviet Union at the time, or Russia at the time. Yeah. Things like that. I'll watch something all the way. I will deep dive into it. Don't, it, don't I'm, I'm deep diving. Like when I read, I read, I'm, I'm deep diving because what's happening as I'm going through things, I'm, I'm pulling out uh, uh, nuggets. Let's put it that way. Here's what I got from the Joe Rogan book, book uh, podcast. And amongst many other things, but it's interesting. It was really interesting because uh, when he's talking to Trump, right? Everybody's talking about all this and dee dee da 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 da, and everybody's looking for their little point of view. But he said something very interesting because, uh, and, and I, I should go back and listen to it. I know I, I never go back. He said, "Oh yeah, they made a just an off kind of thing." He said, "Yeah, like when you said lock, lock her up," and he he did an off kind of thing. He said, "Oh yeah, but." Uh, Basically, he was saying, I wasn't really going to lock her up. I just said that. You have to understand, and Joe Rogan said this before, Donald Trump 
has comedic timing. Donald Trump is a comedian. Okay? I'm just telling you that. He will say stuff just to get a, and I've done this too. I'll, he'll say stuff that just to get a, 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 a rise out of people, you know? So when he says that, he doesn't mean, and in fact, I didn't know, he went off. He said, said you know, how are you, you going to lock up, you know, uh, 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 somebody who served the government, blah, 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 da, 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 da. He wasn't talking about, so he's talking about Hillary, you know what I mean? He wasn't going to lock Hillary. How are you going to lock up, a, 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 you know, like try and lock him up, I suppose, you know what I mean? It caused all kinds of things, right? Some stuff me. Oh, that's that's brilliant, right? Hmm, that's interesting. Um, let me go back. Let me stay on Donald Trump for one day. Um, when in uh, twenty sixteen, when he when he won that thing, in July of that year, everybody said Donald Trump. Da, 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 da. He's, they were really coming down on. They was coming up on Hillary, whatever have you. I seen they have played something that Ali G. That uh, the 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 cat from England that that's always we had this Ali Ali G. I'm inside. Sasha Baron Cohen or whatever the, the boy's name is that did all the you know the Barat and all that stuff, stuff those movies he had one of the characters he had did was thing called Ali G which was like they always do he was like a rapper <laughs> right and he got the big chain over there and he was interviewing a bunch of politicians at the time this is way before it's not 2016 this is um, it has to be like even before this character came out even before it must have been during the, during the Newt Gingrich kind of era. The 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 what do you not the, what, what the Newt was uh um the boy the Bubba the Bubba era. You know who I'm talking about. You know the, the you know the early nineties, right? That's when this Ali G category was late night, whenever he came out, and he had all these politics, and he basically would would, would I want to say humiliate them, but embarrass them, right? And one of the people that came through at the time, I guess because he was famous, then, was Donald Trump, and, and, and just hotel room and sit down and and Don, and, and, and so Donald Trump says well what, what, what do you what do you need what do you got the, and Ali G said something for he said not interested and went up and left I said it was like these other politicians he wasn't a politician at the time it was like people it means pure business this is business you got my you, I gave you time you're gonna give me some nonsense here read it right away boom I'm trying to tell you Donald Trump is a fast study I'm not shilling for Donald Trump or nothing like that. I'm just trying to explain to you that whatever you think, and I've said this before, Donald Trump is smarter than you think. He's smarter than you are. <laughs> this from a boy from the Bronx, you know what I mean? He's a boy from Queens, you know what I mean? But I'm going to tell you, look, let, me, let me leave that alone. So, so I said, oh, he could he could win because he's blah, blah, blah. And he did win. But that, leave that alone. But we won't get into 2020 and whatever, whatever we have. 2020, whatever that with the whole thing with, with Biden and stuff like that. But now, uh, I got very interested, not very, but interested in, in the tangential way of of, of, uh, of Candace Owen. Now, for me, Candace, if I had any suggestion for, for she, she she's a researcher. Like, she's like, like wait, she's a researcher, right? Uh, uh, and she gets locked on something, that uh, if you lock on her, in other words, I would say, Candace, you say in, in your library you have a, uh, 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 Shelby Steele, all these right wing kind of kind of people, Sewell and stuff like that. I said, well, you know, uh, you need to start reading some, uh, you know, Amos Wilson. You know, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, so you know, you need to start listening, reading some other people. Let's put it that that way, and then her perspective will change. But whatever she goes and she deep dives into. Now, I just I'm not even through with the thing. I I download stuff and then I look at them later because. Uh, Cost of uh, being a well, being in South Africa and the, and the, and the, and the, and the internet, so it costs a lot. So I, I usually download blah blah blah. So I'm reading. She has this. It's, it's just up. You should, should check it out. She has this interview. Well, she's been going into into Kamala Harris's you know background, and she had this. She has an interview with a cat, a, a doctor who cat that was in those circles in the Berkeley area. The the San Francisco area at the time that Kamala he's running the same circle that had her ascent. Let's put it that way. Well, I had always said, I um, mean, one more thread I have to put this because I'm I'm weaving, I'm weaving. Those people listen to her, you understand? I'm weaving. Uh, one of the things I've always said because I, again I've I mentioned this before. I read this book a long time before they made it a movie with Nicole Kidman 
I had a lot of stuff I'd be reading, and then they'd make it into a movie. And I'd say, oh, let me check it out. But they made it more like a romantic thing. I think the woman's name was Gertrude Bell. Uh, but she's uh, she was an anthropologist around the time of, 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 of Lawrence of Arabia and, and, and Winston Churchill and that, that kind of that kind of time. It's a female anthropologist, and uh, she was bringing information to you know to the powers that be in England, right? And I also remember some other stuff that I read before too. Uh, that a lot of times we, you, you, uh, uh, anthropology the the uh, spies the, the the agencies you know. They would uh, 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 say, let's say, debrief anthropologists or try to get anthropologists to give them information because anthropologists would go to places and, and, and live in certain situations where they can get some more some knowledge of it. So, so the first to me, I mean, aside from the first thing was, was uh, uh, when you had missionaries, you know, would go into areas, right? Then they would come back and maybe their, their brother or their cousin was 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 a military person or a church person or what, what a church missionary. Uh, and they and they would and they would give information to these agencies, right? And then they would go and be able to conquer that area, right? Well, the anthropologists the same thing, to me. The mo modern modern day missionaries, let's put it that way. Um, and so, I'm looking at Kamala Harris's mother. I'm going like, she's really suspect because she's supposed to be an anthropologist. Got you. But she's in one place, then she goes to this other place, then she goes to Indonesia, then she's hooking up with the with the people that da, 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 da. Well, look at the latest uh, Candace Candace podcast and interviewing this guy, the whole MK Ultra thing. Listen, it's amazing. I mean, Candace. And look, here's the other thing. Don't be too quick to to. To you know, somebody some one thing, one thing, but they you have these phases in your life. You have these phases of understanding, these these uh, developmental kind of thing where you have your you, you, your change, your your thing changes, and so you're not supposed to take everybody with their face power. You take this from this person, this person. And if you're if you're a living person, you put things together for your for your own understanding, right? Back to what I'm saying about this whole Candace thing. So. Uh, so, so, so I'm going like, wow, now it all makes sense. Kamala is a MK Ultra, um, how do you say, MK Ultra adjacent baby, <laughs> along with her sister. And it also makes sense that her mother, well, when she was in uh, California and Berkeley, where I tried to get in all these civil rights movement and hooked up with, 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 with a mom. Marxist, whatever, a thinking man, the Harris guy from Jamaica, because she was infiltrating these places. And she sort of left him, took the kids, uh, like, uh, you know, took the kids to wherever they she took the kids to, right? And, um, and he is like that. And she goes to Canada and spends a whole year or two years trying to get to this, this, uh, uh, this prestigious hospital, or this hospital, which was an MK Ultra hospital kind of thing. It's amazing. Oh, you can't, there's going to be a book that comes out on this. Y'all are going to be surprised, right? So this whole thing, and with, the, with the Joe Biden, with all that's happening, you know, you're going like, huh, this is interesting. What can little old me do? I don't know what you can do, but I know what I'm going to do every chance I get. I'm going to be talking to you. I, I do my little comments on the on the internet, you know, like like uh, there's this uh, there's this thing. Uh, they like the politicians like to say this, uh, Dr. Phil, right? You know, the the, the, the Oprah operative, the uh, Dr. <laughs> who Oprah gave us Dr. Phil. He said something that the Trump guy said, you know, oh, you Americans, we built this company out of the, we, we we built this country, uh, we're hardworking people, something like that. I'm like, no, you didn't. It's American Africans, you know. Uh, Negroes, if you will, you know, if enslaved people that built this country. <laughs> so, it's, hey, there's a preamble to what everybody says, depending on what your understanding is, depending on what your, your background is. If you never read any Frederick Douglass, <laughs> if you never read any uh, W.E.B. Du Bois, you know, if you never read any Anne Petrie or, or you know, then... <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So, anyway, I know I just meandered. You, you got to put all this stuff together. 
I like to talk like a raving lunatic because I don't want people to understand what I'm saying. And you need to do your own research. All I, I just give you the hints. I could to call them breadcrumbs, whatever. Well, all these all these European references, what can I tell you? But I just give you little hints and then you got to do your own research. But I'm just saying, be aware there are things that's gonna happen. I mean, Cat was so Cat Williams was so right. Beginning of the year, what did he say? This is the year for revelations, you know. All things are coming to life. And the year is not over yet. You got October, November, December. The next three months, there's going to be all kinds of bombshells <laughs> coming down. I shouldn't talk like that. All kinds of inf information coming down that you should be aware of, right? Okay. So I'm going I'm to leave it there. This is certainly not what I want to talk to today because it's a Tuesday. I'm supposed to talk elections. I'll talk elections the rest of the, 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 the rest of the week. On, you know, I'm on a campaign, my campaign. Of, uh, I need you to write me in. Uh, me, you said, well, "What's your name, brother?" <laughs> yeah. No, I need you to write in. Those people that are voting in the United States, you can write in. You know, I need you to write in. Uh, you, wherever you, someplace on the ballot, just not to be the president, it could be a, just, you know, congressperson or whatever. Just write in. Uh, you're, you're going to put write in lineage reparations. Just write lineage reparations on the ballot. On the ballot. And I'll, I'll go and say, uh, I'll, for the rest of the week, because we're coming up to the last week, then I'm going to do my whole campaign push like that. That's one thing. The other thing is that, uh, remember, you should sign the Article 6 petition to kick the United States out of, out, of, out, of, uh, out of the UN. What else? That's it. Okay. I'll talk to you later. Okay? Y'all take care.